alive, alive. Humans have had a genuine interest in artificial intelligence even before the term was coined in the 1950s. The modern concept is part of a tradition that extends through myth and legend all the way back to the ancient Greeks. It's been a source of hopes and fears, dreams and nightmares. It's a robot. Will our creations be our allies or our mortal or immortal enemies? Until recently, it didn't really matter. The ability to create intelligent machines was impossibly out of reach. But Ray Kurzweil believes it's not only probable, but inevitable, and coming sooner than you think. The inventor and author has become the most outspoken prophet of the coming technological singularity. By the time we get to the 2040s, say 2045, we'll be able to multiply human intelligence a billion fold. That will be a profound change that's singular in nature, so we use this term. A label first used in 1993 by computer scientist and science fiction writer Werner Vinge. Vinge predicted that within 30 years we would create a superhuman intelligence, and shortly after, the human era would be over. Now, this may not be obvious, but I happen to be human myself, so this concerns me. In his book, The Singularity is Near, Kurzweil is a little more conservative than Vinge. He gives us till mid-century, at which point exponential growth in genetics, nanotech, and robotics will drive an intelligence explosion. Once we have a brain smarter and faster than ours, it will design the next generation, which in turn will create the next faster and faster, leaving us meat bags behind. The pace of change will be so rapid, the transformation of human life so profound, that it will be literally impossible to predict what happens next. But that hasn't stopped people from trying. Judging by our mythology, including our modern novels and movies, Shall we, play a game? we seem to think our creations will turn against us. Obey me and live, or disobey and die. I'm not sure what that says about us. We'd have to cut his higher brain functions. Is it the psychology of abuse? A guilty conscience? We're always inventing father figures to punish us for overreaching. You have created a monster and it will destroy you. Patience, patience. It's the Frankenstein story, one of our favorites. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! Oh, oh, oh. In the name of God. I don't actually fear a robot uprising. But I do keep a hostage in my shed, a Roomba. Just a bargaining chip in case something goes down. Roomba is the house cleaning robot made by iRobot. That's not an Apple product. It's the name of a company in Massachusetts that also makes military robots. Hackbot, the US Army's first battlefield robot, checks the trail ahead. Are you kidding me? Who writes this stuff? Are we living in a sci-fi B-movie? They make tactical military robots, and they already have an army of autonomous vacuum cleaners patrolling five million living rooms. What could possibly go wrong? iRobot is also the name of an Isaac Asimov book, which in Spanish is Yo Robot! Half a century before anyone was talking about the singularity, Asimov devised the three laws of robotics, a set of rules hardwired into the positronic brains of his robots that prevents them from harming humans. I guess without those laws, the assumption is robots would sooner kill us than fetch us a beer. But what's always bothered me is they only have three laws, while we have 10 commandments. That seems to put us at a disadvantage. Brother, you want jackets? We got jackets. You want trousers? We got trousers. But maybe they won't be so ill-tempered towards us. My own giant robot. Maybe instead of a rebellion or a stern father, we'll get an overprotective mother. You have consumed enough alcohol for one evening. 
or a companion who likes us. Are those two girls machines? As more than just a friend. Now how can you say a thing like that? We could get lucky. If they're made in our image, even if they are vastly superior, they might have an inferiority complex. But in case that doesn't happen, what can we do? Give them only non-rechargeable batteries? Or put them on a really short cord? The least we could do is make sure everything we build has an off switch. Realistically, it probably won't be that easy. After all, we're talking about superhuman intelligence. I know that you and Frank were planning to disconnect me. Where the hell did you get that idea, Hal? But we could call in some favors. Star sapphires take a week to crystallize properly. Would diamonds or emeralds do? And maybe, with a little help from our friends, we'll wind up on top. For Time Video, I'm Brian Mallow. For Time Video, I'm Brian Mallow.